think most people, like we're saying, consume everything on TikTok, Instagram, social media. Right, right. If you don't know how to market yourself there and you're an athlete or an entertainer in today's day and age, you're barking up the wrong folks. You may never get where you want to get. Without or you the, may take the long way there yeah. because it, it, you have to market yourself. I treat fighters fair because that's what separates me too. Like I don't look at it as just a business. I also look at it as like, look, man, I, I got to do right by you, and we're able to do, uh, you know, show them this is how we get there, and then okay, we're at this level now. This is what we can do. It, it makes it rewarding, you know, because right. like now you're seeing that they're in the mix. All right, uh, welcome everybody, uh, Marvick Productions. My name's Marlon. We got Victor, my co-host. Yes, sir. Let's go. How you doing, G? Feeling good. I just realized you're rocking their their gear. Mo boxing. We gotta get no some problems. of yours. Right on now. Oh, yeah, right on. Next, okay. next. Uh, we got a special guest. Um, I was telling him, you know, when he came in, that we really do appreciate you uh, coming in last minute. We had somebody no else planned, but something happened. It didn't go down. We almost canceled the podcast, but. Jerry here, yeah, you know, my man is clutch happen. and, you know, Victor made it happen. So, Victor, I'll let you do more of a proper intro for yeah. my man. Well, Jerry, man, first of all, bro, thanks for being here again. No problem. Thank you guys uh, for having me. Of course. Jerry, also known as Wild Card King. Uh, what, what, what would you describe yourself in the boxing world as an advisor, promoter? Uh, no, I'm an advisor, manager. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a company called First to Fight Management. Um, First to Fight Management. Yes. Gotcha. And, it, and that's your company. That, that's that's my company along with my partner, which is also my client, which uh -huh. is uh, uh, former world champion uh, Jamel Herring, Semper Fi, the gotcha. Fight Marine. Yeah. Shout out Jamel Herring. So, yeah, and, uh, you know, it's uh, something that uh, we went ahead and were able to go ahead and build, mm -hmm. um, you know, when we linked up and worked, you know, because I had already went ahead, like, our, our – our paths crossed and they were similar, so it was just kind of a a, a good synergy when we met up. Is, is nice. it like uh, you guys are both veterans, correct? No, well, uh, almost. So, like, mm -hmm. what happens is that Jamel is a veteran, mm -hmm. uh, decorated Marine, mm -hmm. um, was a captain of the 2012 Olympic team. Nice. Was an active duty Marine fighting in the Olympics. Damn. Uh, representing the United States. And uh, I just come back from two tours in Iraq. Mm -hmm. And uh, my family, you know, are full of Marines. My brother, mm -hmm. my oldest brother's a Marine, his, uh, my nephew. You know. Thank you for your service, by the right. way. Yeah, so, like, it's it's great because I grew up on all these Marine Corps bases. Mm -hmm. And uh, me and Jamel connected right away because, you know, I was a fan of his. Uh, you know, I was a fighter myself because that's the family sport. My, my father, you know, obviously went ahead and did it first. Mm -hmm. And then my brother boxed in the military. And then, uh, you know, I boxed as an amateur. And when my career came to an end because i had injuries and i just decided that i want to go ahead and pursue a pro career mm -hmm. I, I focused on the business and nice that's how i went ahead and you know uh met people made contacts started and, networking all right. that exactly you got to network and and you know you meet people and you you make the most of it right of course because of course these are people that you you see how they work you see the position they're in and, and you admire them and then you also go ahead and start connecting the dots on Who's who, and um, and that led right. to a lot of good things for me. I got I got a lot of questions regarding that. Um, sure. I I want to kind of save that if if you don't mind, maybe we can start a little bit. You know, okay. talking about you, like right. you, sure. you as a person, and sure. you mentioned a little bit about your dad, like he's kind of started it. Yeah, I think that was the same with you, right? Like you kind right. of it always. That's what I hear. That's, that's common. Yeah. It's always yeah. the dad. Yeah, my my, my dad was a fighter. He had over 100 fights as a pro. Wow. And nice. fought for a What's world dad's time. name? My, my father fought under the name Babe Herman. Okay. And my father was on the cover of the Ring Magazine. Dang. My father oh, shit. was uh, Babe Herman? Yeah, he, he was a recognizable figure. Mm -hmm. he, his era that he fought in was the 1920s. Oh, wow. My father was an older man. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, look, he, everything that, that you know, you could ask of a fighter, he did it. Mm -hmm. And he was pretty damn good because, you, you know, you fight a world champion, you have a – uh, more than one fight with them, you actually have four or five fights with them. Wait a minute, that's that's no coincidence. Mm -hmm. That's a series. You know, you're having a rivalry with that person. Right. And then back in those days, you know, here's a Mexican guy from California. He has to fight under – it's a different time, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, there was racism and, and right. people were less accepting. So he fought under the name of Babe Herman, and Babe was a popular name because – Babe Ruth. Babe, Babe Ruth, and there was other fighters named Babe Herman also, mm -hmm. which took that name. But he fought under that moniker, that name, and they marketed him in New York. Mm -hmm. He ran with the Italians. Obviously Very interesting. Tell yeah. you who they were right because yeah. they ran. They they had an influence <laughs> on boxing and yeah, 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 uh, a yeah. big influence. And because of that, he was able to fight in the Garden. He was nice. able to fight wow. in Madison Square Garden. So your dad and, fought in the Garden. Yeah, and he, and he fought against uh, Hall of Famer Lewis Kid Kaplan. Mm -hmm. 
Lewis is in the Hall of Fame. What uh, weight uh, class was your father? Featherweight. In? Featherweight. And featherweight. Okay. Yeah, and uh, the actual cover of the ring magazine says uh, Babe Herman, the next featherweight champion of the world. Wow. Yeah. Do you have so, a copy? Do you have yeah, a, yeah. Course, I, have a, I have a PDF and yeah. I have a printed poster in my house. And That's so cool. Know, so it, it's cool. You know, it's like, and I grew up seeing all these little artifacts around the house, right? Mm-hmm. His trophy that said Babe Herman had a picture of him, a black and white picture of him and said the years he was active. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, seeing that as a kid, I'm like, okay, who's a fighter? And then I'm like, whoa, that's my dad. And then. Were you close to dad? Yeah, of course. I grew up with my dad, uh, you know. Uh, you saw normal, him fight then, obviously. Normal house, household with my mom and my dad. And then, um, you know, my brother, uh, when I was about, like, one or two years old, he had enlisted in the Marine Corps. And so um, I, I went ahead and I, like, remember my early memories of watching Hagler Hearns and Hagler Sugar Ray and all these fights with my dad. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, you know, I like this. You know, this is this, is, this is for me. So I, I like the eye. sport. And then my, but my dad was always like, hey, look, boxing's not for you. Because I, I think he, he knew – the politics of the sport, the business, mm-hmm. and then just how the sport moves. And he was like, look, you go to school. He wanted you to have a better life yeah, in his eyes. Yeah, of course. Have an education. Go to school. That's usually how it and, is. And don't mm-hmm. fight. But, look, you know, I was going to do what I was going to do. The so. love was too right. strong for boxing. You said, yeah, I got to do at it. at that point. Yeah, look, you know? I mean, I, I used to watch him when I was a kid. Oh, you know, I was in, like, elementary school, kindergarten or first grade. And I used to see him every morning while I'm getting ready to go to school. He'd get up, and he'd be getting up. And even as, you know an older man, because like I said, you know, there was obviously a danger difference between him and my mom. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously him and us, because, you know, he was an older man. Mm-hmm. He had already lived his life, right. By the time, like our family came along, you know, and, um, he basically would get up every day. I just have it go. We had a gym in the that garage. discipline is already in Yeah, the heavy bag. He had That's the, the love the, for the, and sport, he would train. Though. Yeah. And he would train. Mm-hmm. And that, that was his routine. Mm-hmm. He would hit that heavy bag. He would do what he had to do, jump rope, do everything he had to do, and I'll be like, "Yeah, oh. it's crazy that you say that because I, I see a lot of people that retire from the sport, mm-hmm. but that discipline is what keeps them still wanting to come back to the sport." Yeah, of course. And, yeah. and look, uh, the doctors are telling them, "Hey, listen, you know, you should probably, you stop. know, hey, stay out. No, like stay out, <laughs> oh, stay active, do something yeah. for mm-hmm. exercise." And my, my dad was like, "Okay, this is easy. I'm gonna no do problem what I do and go, um, go run ten miles real quick." <laughs> no, he was like, "You know, look, hitting the heavy bag for like, you sit there and you tell somebody." Hit the heavy back for ten rounds. Mm-hmm. You'll be lucky if you get two rounds out of them because right. that's very that true. is very very tough. And listen, I I, I you know I have a, uh, heavy bags mm-hmm. that are like um, water and and padding and foam mm-hmm. because they're, they're easier on my hands because mm-hmm. you know it's just safer for my Sounds hands and stuff like wrist, that, right? You could I don't yeah, break a wrist. wrist, but my dad's was full of sand, <laughs> and it was like a hundred and seventy pounds tough. full of sand. Yeah, and my dad would just you know, beat the shit out of it. <laughs> and I'm like with leather gloves on his hands just to protect his, his, his skin. Uncles, yeah. And I'm like, and I remember why I didn't take those gloves and they had like a little metal weight in the middle. And then they were old school, Everlast gloves. Mm-hmm. And I'd grab them and I'd hit the bag. And I'd be like, what the fuck? Like this thing hurt. This, this thing hurts, but yeah. <laughs> that just lets you know. And, um, uh, I remember every time, like, I would hit the heavy bag. The first couple of days, my knuckles would start peeling blood, all that stuff. But then there, I don't know about you, but I feel some type of peace when I'm hitting that. But I get lost. Yeah, in there. you know, look, man. I, I look, you know. Um, you picture someone's face like while you're hitting. Nah, nah, man. Just the just the movement. You know, just the bah, you get in the zone. It's yeah, fun. Yeah. You know, look. It, when, I've done it before, and you're right. It's a lot harder than it looks because you think you could go a long time, but like yeah. a minute in is like, yo. There was a an it's article a that yeah, an article recently came out and it named boxing the most toughest sport in the whole. world. It's road. always been, man. It's always been because like. You know, listen, you're asking someone to go ahead and play defense, mm-hmm. play offense. All at the same time. Um, um, stay composed, mm-hmm. not let their emotions get the best of them. And, and you're, listen, your heart's beating to your chest. Mm-hmm. Someone wants to take your head off. Right. And and you're standing across from them, and, and you got to pull it all together. You're trying to figure them out. Yeah, man. And, the, and then at the, 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 the highest level or the as the levels get higher, these people are just as conditioned as you are. Mm-hmm. Right. They're you know? just as deadly assassins. Question, yeah. though. Yes. Okay. You you just said somebody. Who said it was a dead or toughest sport? Somebody? Uh, an article. Yeah, an there article was an article. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you guys you guys think it's tougher than the UFC? 100. Yeah. So, so I'll, tell you, about, I'll tell you yeah, why. I'll tell you why. I'd so, like to. Like you know, to... look, I have a wrestling background. Full discretion. Okay, cool. I have a wrestling background. I have a martial arts background. You got the cauliflower? I have, I have okay. a BJJ. No, but I have the broken cauliflower in my ears. Okay. okay. So, um, listen. Look, in MMA, if I want, I have the ability to go ahead and, like, 
If, if I don't want to stand with you anymore, if you're checking wrestle. my kicks and my legs, take it to the ground. Beat up or whatever the case is, I can wrestle you down and take it to the ground and, and put you in a position you. where I can rest mm-hmm. and I'm not going to take abuse and I can go on the defensive and I can That's ride fair. out. I can ride or you could hit against the cage too, and like yeah, but I pull you to the middle, and we I put you there. I I get in a you know either you half say, guard or, or side guard, a side bomb position, and we're like, not going anywhere. We're gonna stay there. Kind of like Khabib, he would control the whole fight once he brought it down to the floor. Yeah, it's 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 smart. You can you can go ahead and if you have those tools, mm-hmm. you can use them to your advantage, and 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 no one's gonna move you for that. So right? what? So what's your argument? Like, there's really no resting then in boxing. Like you Listen, can't really twelve rounds. A, a lot of minutes. different things are said about boxing, but some of the things that have been said that really stuck with me is that who you are as a person comes out in there, mm. you know, explain because, that a little more. Like so that. you're put in predicaments and like life, you're either going to figure a way out of it mm-hmm. and you're going to go ahead and dig in your tool bag and, and you know, be resilient mm-hmm. or you're going to cower and, and you're going to fold. Yeah. Right. And, and, and you know, that's the amazing thing about the sport, right? Because um, one of my friends, uh, you know, he's a writer. His name is Carlos Acevedo. He used to call it the cruel sport. The what? The cruelest. The cruelest. The cruelest sport. Yeah. And it's also the most honest mm-hmm. because you can't hide who you are in there. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and if, you know, if you I want agree. to break and this and that, you're either going to take a knee or get knocked out. Right. I, I have heard that even though you would think that the UFC is probably deadlier because you can use knees, elbows, you can use whatever. But listen, it's, but it's easier it's to not. get knocked out. Look, if yeah, I, yeah, yeah. That's if what I, I get cut, yeah. right. if I get cut because of an elbow mm-hmm. or, if, or if I get caught and I get knocked out, it's cool. That's it. That's it. it. Yeah. Hey, look, it was one or, punch. Or if I got caught in, in, in a submission, is, you're taking multiple. If hits I get caught in a head. submission, mm-hmm. and I, and you know, there's no disgrace in tapping. Mm-hmm. You know, fighters do it every right. week. Right. Right. It's okay. Mm-hmm. Everybody understands that. But in boxing, if you go ahead and you're getting overwhelmed, and you turn your back and you walk away, that's it. Is, it. Yeah. Oh, it's, people forgiving if you get knocked out. You get yeah. knocked out, it happens. You get stopped, it happens. But you can't. Throwing the towel type. Mm-hmm. You can't, you know, uh, uh, real fighters or fighters in general aren't built like that because most fighters that put their time into the gym or training, you know, they're, they're not wired like that. They, 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 they the corner is there to protect them. Right. So mm-hmm. corner can't be braver than the fighter. Mm-hmm. The, the trainer has to understand, look, my fighter will live to fight another day mm-hmm. and that's okay. You know, but a fighter is going to go ahead and try, right? Yeah. Watch Gotti Ward. Those guys weren't Man, stopping anytime yeah. soon. If mm. you haven't watched those fights, those are legendary fights yeah. right there. No, it's interesting what you said. It's, it's funny that you say that, though, because I was actually just talking to my brother. We're um, going over. I'm, I'm putting him up on game of who Subriel Matias is. Closer. Yeah, I was like, man, he, the guy was doing pretty good. The kid was from Argentina. He was a big puncher from Argentina. No, that that's Ponce. This is his recent fight. He was on the David Benavides card. Mm-hmm. Uh, Subriel Matias fought him. Um, uh, his he has a weird name, but he was undefeated, right. twenty three and zero. Uh, but he he gave up on the stool in the fifth round. Uh, so oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He was he was uh, from like um, ca- uh, ca- ca- yeah somewhere uh, over there. Kazakhstan uh, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And then that uh, you're right. He went back. So listen, look in that fight, you could tell. I think the guy was in the fight, but he, he came out felt, strong. He, he kind of felt that the fight was his getting legs away were from out. him. Mm-hmm. And maybe his legs were getting away yeah. from him. And they made a decision in that corner. We're good. Yeah. And we're good. And and he's undefeated. This will be his first loss. He's still young. So yeah. that was a smart move in your guys' opinion. Yeah. Right? And look, right. corner read it. Like, this is not going to go anywhere. L- listen, a-, a lot of those fighters from. Well, I, the, I believe the, he told the corner, like, my legs are done. Oh. Okay, a lot okay, of the okay. fighters that come from the Eastern Bloc, mm-hmm. former Soviet Union countries, mm-hmm. um, those are tough tough people they don't have the amenities of of americans or the western world yeah 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 yeah. they don't have that comfortable those people are very very hungry and they fight for a greater purpose stay alive you know trying to take care of mom dad Mm -hmm. whatever poverty they have like they're trying to really get somewhere Mm -hmm. to set their families forward and then you know you got a guy like sabriel matias Mm -hmm. and sabriel matias is wired different man Puerto Rico. That he dude got is a getting shot. Is a big puncher. He's a kid that's just from a, Puerto Rico. Is not all resorts and white right. beaches. You it's know, white not all beaches. Bad Bunny. No man, listen. <laughs> Puerto Rico is a hood, mm-hmm. and it's a tough place, you know. And uh, it's a place where 
uh, if you grow up in the wrong neighborhood, you don't have a choice. You got to get out of that. You've been environment. there. I, I know too much about it. You know, yeah. <laughs> like, and, and it's, it's wild because, um, you know, even their legends aren't safe there, right? Mm-hmm. Hector Camacho, rest in peace. Rest in peace, yeah. You know, it was killed and mowed down in broad daylight. Mm-hmm. And it's just one of those things of where Sabriel Matias is a tough guy, fi- fighter. You know, he's a guy that's been on the other side of uh, the death of a fighter, right. right? Because a fighter that he was fighting took so much punishment that he, he ended showed up me that. and passed away. And, you know, you got to go ahead and do what you got to do to protect your fighter. If you understand, hey, this isn't it. We're not going to win today. If this guy has a record where he's killed somebody well, he's, and, and then you're fighting him and you're not doing that well, like, yeah, that makes sense. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, look, he's a tough guy. He's a big puncher. And, um, he's you know, resilient. he, he, he comes doesn't forward. stop yeah. coming. Mm-hmm. And this is the guy that you want Theo. I want Theo Fimo to fight him, man. I, what I what that, do you think? I look, think <laughs> what, that guy is not flashy. There's no... Uh, you he's know, the, he's he, not going to run. He's not going to move. He's going to come he, straight at him. The amount of pressure that he puts on you mm-hmm. is very, very difficult to deal with. It's overwhelming to if some fighters. you had a hard time with Cambosas being in your face and overwhelming you to the point where he dropped you, right. busted you up, and it's beat true. you for your your lightweight titles, mm-hmm. um, nothing This is another level. From Sabriel right. He thinks He thinks Dale would beat him. I think based on the style, because Matias comes forward and 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 it actually proved on Saturday or Thursday, excuse me, that Tail can't fight moving forward. Like if he has to hunt you down, he struggles. So he's more of a you come towards me, I'm gonna move, you know, use counter my punch counter me. punch you. Move around. A, I, I I'll, I'll argue that because Cambosa is not a cutie. Cambosa is not a. Uh, well, he uh, came he uh, came at Cambosa Cambosas, and he paid listen, the price for it. There's a couple of things with Tail Fimo. Teofimo He's one of your favorite fighters, right? Okay. <laughs> no, and I'll, I'll get to that in a second. But, hey, yeah, uh, please. Uh, Cambosas is a fighter that had a smart corner. Mm-hmm. They understood lateral movement, mm-hmm. confuses Teofimo. They did that, and then they went ahead and where they picked their shots, they stood and they banged it out. It worked. And he got the best of it. That right hand. Right, Dang. he got the best of it because he scored first, the knockdown, mm-hmm. busted him up. And once you're down and you get busted up, in the first you're, round. You're playing catch up. Yeah. The yeah. First you're playing catch up. And because now you feel like, oh man, I'm trying to keep this wall from coming down, right? Mm-hmm. Because the world's crumbling around me and I gotta try to slow it down. Right. And even if you go ahead and dig yourself out of that, subconsciously you still think, man, I'm behind, right? Mm-hmm. What what else do I have to do? And short of you coming back and scoring a knockout, it, it's gonna be tough. It's an uphill battle. And I think Campbell's has fought a beautiful fight. Big time. And he, he did I became a justice. fan of Cambosas that that fight because just, just, there was just a lot of shit talking from that camp, Teofimo and his father. I just think they were like super cocky, yeah, way over their home, and, and they got humbled. And, and I was really happy for Cambosas because mm-hmm. Cambosas works with a friend of mine's promoter, Lou Bella, mm-hmm. former head of HBO, Hall of Famer. Lou, Lou made an investment in Cambosas. He stuck by his guy. He brought him all the way from Australia right. to the States, put him on all these different cards, and put him in the position – to be ranked number one mm-hmm. and force that mandatory. Yeah. And when they got their shot, they, they cashed took, it in. Yeah. They cashed it in. Cambos has made himself a lot of money mm-hmm. because he stepped up and took advantage of the opportunity, right? Right. right. Opportunities right. come in boxing, and fighters need to go ahead and really understand that there's no Hall of Fame for passing on fights. Mm-hmm. There isn't. Yeah. You yeah. know? Good point. You, 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 a, a good manager, a good promoter, and a good fighter, there's a synergy in that where they're going to make fights happen. Mm-hmm. And now it's up to the fighter because he's the only one that goes ahead. And when me and the promoter take two steps back, mm-hmm. they take one step forward. You know, right. we get out of the ring and they stay in the ring. Right. They have to fight. They got to do, do Jerry, so what, what do you do exactly? I mean, you're you're talking about mm-hmm. a great team, a promoter and all that. He was telling me a little bit, you're more of an advisor. Is I'm, a, your... I'm a manager advisor. Like, listen, okay. what happens is that. Like, like, what, what role do you play on making a fight? I guess yeah. There's a negotiation on fight purses. There's. The strategy of actually, how what's the path to the world title, right? Okay. And then how, you know, listen, a fighter wants to turn pro. They're young. Okay, look, this is my timeline that I have. I want these are my goals. How can I do this? Right. There has to be some navigation on the roadmap. Yeah. And you can't blindly go into it, right? Because if you step foot in a place that you've never been before, 
your and career could end that you're fast. driving and he's navigating you but he doesn't know the place either right how are you going to get where you want to get right right right, right you know right, right. and uh, look like the, the blind leave the blind exactly and look you know world champions i've been blessed i've had them and we've went ahead and always started from scratch mm-hmm. and then gotten to where we want to get and then world title challenges the big money fights Dude. fights in the pandemic when everyone was gone no fans we were able to go ahead and make those things happen mm-hmm. overseas abroad this is not new to me experience you have that is the best experience teacher. yeah, right, right. yeah experience is the best teacher and I, look you know i'm not a dummy this is my background i have a, a degree in marketing i study marketing i study business you know i have a you know 30 plus years of working in in business and negotiating some mm-hmm. pretty big deals that are you know um huge compared to boxing so you know you're not going to go and scare me as saying hey let's sit down and let's negotiate because i'm like great this is what i do every this day. is your your natural habitat so, so what Jerry, you do. do do you play a role in um by for example like uh the tank and ryan garcia fight you know ryan claims there was a rehydration call clause and all you have to cover all your bases do, so do you play that role for, as there's media, a lot of right? things there's a lot of things that are covered so for example, I mean, you know, you talk about hydration clauses, mm-hmm. rehydration clauses is also, um, you know, inserting rematch clauses. If we're risking something and we can go ahead and, uh, and, and I see, hey, it's in our best interest to insert a rematch clause mm-hmm. because, you know, I always have the utter confidence, you know, the utmost confidence in like the fighter, mm-hmm. but Just we always have to go and something I, it's my job to cover the bases, right? So I say, hey, Look, you got to think outside the box. Yeah, yeah, look, yeah, yeah. you got to cover all scenario, the bases, like you said. We could be in the third round and suffer a headbutt, and then what? Yeah. You yeah. know, and I've seen it happen where, right. you know, even in a fight where we're dominating. And they're like, why didn't you have a rematch clause? Like, oh, your poor team, poor management. Right, and oh. you never want to get called out for that. So, mm-hmm. look, there's times when we could have offered a rematch clause, but I'm also, this is different, right, because a lot of managers have never stepped in there. Mm-hmm. So they see boxing, and I don't know how they see boxing. They might just see it on the business side. Yeah, exactly. I see it also through the eye of a fighter. And I say, listen. You think like them, too. I tell them. Mm-hmm. I tell them. I tell the coach. You're going to beat the shit out of this fighter. This is a fight you're going to win. And and we've already had enough dialogue where I understand their advantages and things, right? Mm-hmm. You're going to win this fight. We can go ahead and do a rematch clause. But then if it's a double-sided rematch clause, you take their belt. You kept yours. Mm-hmm. Now we got to run it back. Do the fans really want to see this? Mm-hmm. And then they're like, yeah, you're right. So we we, we pick you, and choose where we need to do it, right? Yeah. Do you feel that uh, Crawford and Spence deserves to run, to be ran back? I think we've seen what we saw. Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think, I I think you know, no, no disrespect to Errol Spence. And it's, but, and it's not happening, right? No, Spence I, said he's, I don't, he's I don't, not I don't doing believe it. so at all. I, I think that no disrespect to Errol Spence. Mm-hmm. He was a hell of a fighter and, and he accomplished a lot. Mm-hmm. But I think... He was forever changed the night his body flew out of that car and slammed against the concrete. I was just yep. going to ask you, so, okay. So I you agree. think that really did affect him? Absolutely. As someone that, look, I've had. His body flew out of a car? Yeah, he flipped he the car, out. flipped yeah. numerous times. He flew out. It was convertible. His body flew out. Oh, yeah, that's going to fuck the you concrete up. And, and Luckily, he, he didn't break any bones. No, but, but, but you, you know, look, he's, listen, I'm going to tell you something. I've never uh, broken any bones as a result of an auto accident, mm-hmm. but I've had body bruising, mm-hmm. I've had concussions, and uh, it, it's not fun. It doesn't right? leave you the same. It's not fun. And and the I, I remember having my ribs taped because I was in a car accident as a passenger, and, and mm-hmm. you know, uh, the, the car flipped, and I'm thinking, like, holy shit, man. I'm like, you know, wow. There was a I, doctor that was saying uh, that Spence was suffering like repercussions from the accident. Like it, it affects rest- your nervous yeah. system because, look, the last accident that I ever had it was already as an adult. I was in college, and then I remember waking up, and then I said, "Okay, nothing's broken, but I'm in pain." Mm-hmm. There was effects to my vision mm-hmm. from the concussion, and then that takes time because you can't rush it. You got to let your body heal mm-hmm. breast then there was effects to like my neurosystem and i was like oh man this sucks right he obviously suffered some of that it um you know there's things you have to do to go ahead and get yourself past that mm-hmm. so 
I'm not out here taking any more punches as a fighter. So I'm able to go ahead and do the things that I need to do to help my neuro recover, right? Sleep is huge, rest. Um, there's other things I can do, like um, different exercises for my 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 cognizance and, and just to yeah. help my, my brain, right? Right. There's a lot of people that don't do that stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and then going to, like, there's therapy for that mm. where you go through sessions and this and that. You think it's possible for him to make a comeback? Like, if he were to do stuff like that? Like he can, he, but what's he really chasing? Yeah, exactly. Like, look, I, I watched some of my favorite fighters – well, he's still I got see passion him. for it, right? Like, he's still going to... I mean, he Listen, made his you're, money, you're, look, in my, in my the, opinion. The Crawford fight was a huge fight. Mm -hmm. I think he made a lot of money before that fight. I think he made an excess money in that fight. Living in Texas as well. Is not yeah, living in Texas, the cost of yeah. living is less. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, I think the guy owns... A, Property, a he owns a ranch. A yeah. big ranch. You know, um, I, I don't think he needs the sport anymore. I got a feeling he's still going to want know, to, though. You, you wanting to, and you actually that's, that's having pride. success that's in a, it? That, that would be his pride. You know. uh, Keith Thurman recently mentioned that they, they, they asked him a question about him, and I, I like what his response was where he said, look, man, if, if this is it, you know, hold your head high. You had a great career. You, you know, you beat some great fighters. There's no shame. Yeah, but that's pot calling the kettle black, right? Because <laughs> You don't want to fight. Like, no, no, I'm just saying Keith is a guy that <laughs> – Right, yeah, you Keith said the right funny. thing. He didn't want to fight him, but yeah. also, listen, man, you just rolled off the couch after three years, okay? Yeah. <laughs> You've been super inactive. Listen, if you right? want to go, go ahead and go. Yeah, you, I, I, you're I fighting Tim Zhu. Yeah. I His father a, is a legend, right, a right. living legend. You know, the Costia Zhu, right? Like, yeah. Costia's a killer. And and Costia always had that right hand. That was a soul brother killer. He knocked out more brothers than anybody with that right hand. Zam he and has, he knocked he out the great Chavez Sr., mm -hmm. put him on his ass in Arizona. He had Zab Judah doing the stanky legs. Yeah, and and then he broke off no a lot of good Zab. fighters. Like, Shamra Mitchell mm -hmm. beat him down twice and stopped him. And, you know, just Ben Tacky was a hell of a fighter. Beat him down. Costa Zoo beat so many guys. This is a guy that was like... It's funny because his style, too, wasn't all that. But his hands he, he were... He had, like, just a sniper. I don't like, think ah! people realize... Costia understood distance. distance and his arms for a short guy were extremely long. Mm -hmm. His reach was extremely long because his hand or his arms would dangle down around your knees. So people so, probably thought he's sure he's not going to be able to boom. look. This is a case in point. He fought against as an amateur. Costia was a world champion, right? In the amateurs world, amateur champion in the world games. Like Costia zoo beat, the late great Vernon Forrest, okay, which was a US Olympian. Yeah. He beat the great late Vernon Forrest and the amateurs for the world championship. And Vernon is a tall guy that beat the the snot out of Shane Mosley, right? <laughs> yeah. At the at their peak levels in Madison Square Garden on HBO. They all said no. A lot of guys avoided Costi Zoo. Costi Zoo was a king at 140 pounds. He had that reputation. Unified all the belts. And, and and there was a lot of cats that said no. Look, Shane Wilson could have made a stop at 140 or went to 47 to fight De La Hoya. Mm -hmm. He made a business decision and said, no, I'm good. <laughs> and Vernon. I'm going to skip this one right Yeah, here. if a guy beats you at the top of your game in the amateurs, mm -hmm. at the at the pinnacle, right, why wouldn't you want to get some revenge or run it back in the pros? And yeah. they were like, no, nah. if he wants to come to 47, yeah. cool, but that doesn't mean I'm going to fight him. Right, but, right, you right, know, right. I'm going to stay out your way. Yeah, you, know? yeah. you actually make a great point. There Even Floyd didn't hang around at 40. Mm. Long enough. Uh, look, Floyd fought Shamar Mitchell, a close kid who left over after When twice. he fought Castillo, was that at 47 or No, it was 40? 135. 35, okay, so yeah. I was lower. 135 was uh, Floyd Mayweather's least Nine. successful weight. Oh, okay, never mind. He was a killer at 30 because he was pretty boy Floyd. Mm -hmm. At 35, he was having a lot of problems with his hands. Mm -hmm. He wasn't, like, he's good, but he wasn't great. And then uh, from 40 to 47, 54, he took off because he was fighting now. Um, As money made more of yeah, great strategy. fighters. He was fighting big money fighters, right? Mm -hmm. De La Hoya, uh, Canelo, um, Cotto, you know, yeah. he, Marquez, Madonna. You know, Those Madonna. He was fighting guys that he knew that. Okay, I got to be smart about how mm -hmm. I approach them, and you know, um, the better part of valor is discretion, right? So, right. well, he took off after the De La Hoya fight, right? And the De La Hoya he fight actually made him. retired. 
He he retired for like I forgot how long. Maybe well, he retired year. after the Baltimore fight too, yeah. right? Like, let's not forget that I was there that night. <laughs> a but, couple retirements. Yeah. yeah. So, but man, uh, personally, I, I'm a big Mayweather fan. Yeah, um, Floyd is great. I mean, just like his science in the boxing, the the his IQ, defense. Yo, the Mosley fight was crazy. You know, he got rocked there, and he came back and just put on, put on a, a clinic on him. I remember Floyd Floyd Mayweather when he was at 130 pounds. And I think the ring magazine had them both on the cover. It was Floyd was at 30. Sugar Shane Mosley, the IBF champion at 135. He had just beat Philip Holiday. Mm-hmm. And uh, both were on HBO. And that was a fight that they to make. that they wanted. I think I got to ask Lou DeBell about it next time I talk to him soon. Mm-hmm. He, that fight was the fight they wanted to make and that what the fans wanted. Mm-hmm. And um, it's a shame it didn't happen because Shane Mosley was an older man when he fought Floyd. Yeah. His better days were past him, mm-hmm. but if old man Shane could still was quick trigger enough, he still had a dog to find that right hand, mm-hmm. and he fought it more than once that night. And, you know, uh, Floyd held on. Like, could have been that, a different story. Yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, that was the worst I've ever seen uh, Floyd ever been hurt. Like his legs actually buckled. Shane Mosley at thirty five used to throw like these crazy five, six, seven, eight punch combinations. Mm-hmm. He would just like explode. Yeah, and his fans were so. His hands were so fast that he was he able like to go this to jitterness him. to him. Like he, he, would, like, he had some wow. crazy knockouts from 35 to 47 mm-hmm. on the way to Oscar. He was smoking dudes. Jerry, let me ask you something. I mean, as a fan of boxing, mm-hmm. and obviously I don't have your IQ or knowledge for the game, not even close, but one thing I hear, which is not like a good thing I'd say, but I, I hear this often that the the fights that people really want in boxing, a lot of them never happen. Like you just said, right. it would have been great if Mosley would have fought him in right. his younger days. They fought, but they didn't fight when, in when prime it would have been better, to, right? Yeah. So, and, and earlier we were talking about contracts. Right. How there's, and, and, and if we, if you don't mind kind of um, touching a little bit more on that, but I think as fans, we just see like, you know, okay, these two should fight each other. Right. It, it didn't go down and, you know, oh, it's because of money or because they don't want to fight. But no, no there's way more There's uh, way more course. to it. And right? like full discretion, look, my role as an advisor, manager to a fighter is I have to build a career, right? Right. And building a career means we get to a world title, we win the world title, and then I always tell my fighters the money's in the fights. Mm-hmm. So now you're defending, you're making money. Mm-hmm. And gradually the purses keep getting bigger and bigger. And then... We take so that's your roadmap. Like if you were to get an amateur, like world title, let's them, get yeah, you there. Build and then, them up, develop them, allow their skills to catch up, mm-hmm. market them because I have a marketing background. We got to market fighters. Yeah, there people have to care about you, right? It's kind of uh, sorry to interrupt you, but sure. it's kind of like this kid, uh, Emiliano Vargas, the Vargas is right now, sure. right? Uh, I know a lot of people that are like, oh man, just put them against somebody already, like. You know, somebody good, but I'm, I'm trying to explain to him, like, you got to understand. It's a process. It's a process. Like, they're they're, they're building process. them up right now. They're marketing them. Yeah. Emiliano, in my opinion, is going to be a world champion. Yeah, look. El General, he, right? El General, yeah, he got look, the skills. Emiliano, pays the bills. I know his managers. Mm-hmm. Um, I also know his promoter, top rank. We work right. closely. They have the best matchmakers in the game, right? I, I think second to none, the two Hall of Famers, um, Brad Goodman and, 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 and Bruce over there at, at top rank. These guys... Go ahead and build a fighter up mm-hmm. where gradually they keep on making moves, right? Right. And I don't know how many prospects of the year they've had. It's probably <laughs> ridiculous. And then they have a huge amount of Hall of Fame fighters. Mm-hmm. These guys build champions. They know what they're doing. You know, they just went ahead and uh, announced last week the Ring Magazine named, got the year award for next prospect of the year, which was just announced, Bruce Shushu Carrington, mm-hmm. another top ring fighter, a featherweight. Same division as Emiliano. And it's because they build them up to where, with every fight, the performances get better. Mm-hmm. And, you know, look, Abeliano's well on his way. I know he's, he's young. young. He's yeah, young. he's, he's a young kid. 19 years old. Like, he's, he's sparred he's with only Jamel. only 19? Yeah. yeah, he sparred with Jamal before. And I remember when he... I think I was there when they sparred at knockout in South Yeah, Gate. and he was, you know, look, man, it, it, it's one of those things where, you know, I know his manager's Egas and Jose. Jose's a good friend of mine. And, you know, just... You 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 market a fighter, you build them up, mm-hmm. so that their skills in the ring catches up with uh, who they are outside the ring, the recognition. Right. And then you know when you go ahead and get on the same path, and they get to where they recognizable enough, and you, then you'll take the steps. Mm-hmm. And you know if they keep on following that path, it's all it's all should work out. Yeah, like you're you're 
it's kind of like an investment. You know, you're, you're not right. going to dump into it, let it grow. You're right. not going to dump a lot into it and then it not. Right. Who's, and your, who's your biggest uh, right now, like, um, uh, look, fighter? What, for my stable? Yeah. I, I have some killers, For your, for your company. Yeah, like who, yeah, I have some killers. Who gets I mean, you excited right now? Who's I have the, a featherweight, and um, he's same division as Emiliano and Bruce Carrington and all these other kids. He's from Cincinnati, Ohio. He's a Midwest. Hell, yeah, Midwest man. The, uh, the late, great Roger Mayweather used to always tell me the best fighters in the world come from the Midwest. And I believe it. Cincinnati is a hotbed for great fighters. Why do and you think that is? It's just it's tougher just, out there? It's, just, it's, it's tough. tough. Yeah, it's tough, it's tough yeah. man. And, and look, he's a fighter where, you know, I said, you know, Jamel's a New Yorker. Mm-hmm. But Jamel settled in to Cincinnati to train as a professional because of Adrian Bronner. Mm-hmm. Because he, he was... You know, signed with Al Heyman at first, was with the PBC, right. and then um, was training with Adrian in the camp. Mm-hmm. So when Jamel set up camp in Cincinnati, th- there's all these kids, right? There were kids at the time, teens, and he's seen everybody, okay, who's who? This was one of the kids that Jamel used to tell me, Keep this kid's eye. good. Keep your eye on him. This kid's good, and he was ranked number one in two divisions, USA Boxing, and I was like, okay. And we ended up signing him. His name was Michael Gamble. Uh, Michael Gamble? Yeah, Michael Gamble, you know, and uh, the kid's good, man. And, he, you know, we, we just signed him. Uh, we signed him a contract. We've had him, we've managed him for the last couple of years, but we finally got him a promoter. Mm-hmm. And he he's with a great promoter out in Florida named Pro Box. Um, twice a month they have cards on, and they do them on, uh, in, on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And every week, like what we call Boxing Twitter, right, that part of Twitter that's all about boxing, Every Wednesday, people are talking about those fights because they're That's all the about making right. good fights. Yeah, and yep. and all they work with all these managers and promoters, mm-hmm. so you're going to get a lot of crossroad fights. Where cool, you got your kid, I got my kid. Let's have a fight. Let me ask mm. you how that works. That, that's always confused me about boxing. There's like management here, promoter here. Right. Okay, so there's um, yeah. first to fight management. Right. You get a fighter, then you sign him to a promotion company. Correct. So wouldn't like Top Rank be a promotional company? Top Rank is a promoter. The top zone. Rank's a promoter. Top Rank's a promoter. Golden Wizard promoter. But there's Mastrum's other a promoter. There's other promotions out there. There's other promotions. Smaller. Yeah. So okay. so yeah, you have your um, you have your big three, right? Which is like Matchroom. You have uh, which is Eddie Hearn. You have your Golden Way, which is De La Hoya. And then you have uh, Top Rank, which is Bob Arum. Mm-hmm. And then you have your different uh, regional promoters, right? And your regional promoters are based out of different locations in the U.S. Mm-hmm. And they go ahead and, like, their job is to work with managers to look for the next great talent, right? right. Because the manager has their ear to the streets, right? Mm-hmm. And they know if you're doing good scouting, you're going to find the talent. You're the closest right. to the ground. Uh, of course. Yeah. And, and look, the, the guys that we've – if I sign a fighter and if I work with a fighter, it's because I know that that fighter can go ahead and go somewhere. Right. You know, like I, I have the blueprint. Uh, you know, I've won world titles with a fighter, and we've done defenses. And we've made you know how to get the there. Big money fights. Yeah, we've gotten the big money fights, and it's it doesn't happen overnight, mm-hmm. but we know how to do it. And now, when we go after talent, me and Jamel will will scout them, we'll look at them, and then we it's a process. We interview the fighters, and we have to see who's around them and what they're. Ambition and, yeah. and and their goals are right because I can sign a fighter, but the fighter's got to buy into the vision. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. because if there's no buy in, listen, I don't care how talented you are, you're not gonna get where you want to get. Yeah, right? yeah, the passion you know? won't be. Yeah, there. look, I, I uh, this kid was like, you know, like Cincinnati is a tough place. Mm-hmm. He grew up in a tough environment, and he was a victim of a lot of his surroundings, right? And I told him, look, man, let's get on the right path. You're undefeated. You have so much ability. You've been in the camps with Terrence Croft or Jamal Herring. You've seen some of the good. Keyshawn greatest. Davis. Yeah. Uh, Shakur Stevenson. Like, you've been in big-time camps. Mm-hmm. Like, you belong. You've been in there with all these guys in the ring. Mm-hmm. You belong. And he said, okay, let's get to work. We got him a promoter deal. And, you know, he's uh, undefeated uh, since. How old is he? He's a he's a kid. He's like what twenty two years old. Twenty two. So yeah. the world's at his at, at his you know fingertips, and he's like uh, with his new promoter. He's two and zero. He's undefeated still, but pro boxing two and zero. Yeah, and, and right future two and zero with one knockout. And you know um, right now he's coming off his last victory he had as a tough veteran, and he shut him out and 
basically put him in his place. And, you know, right now we're talking about, before I got here, Mm -hmm. we're talking me and Jamel, and I think he's going to go again in maybe April. Nice. We'll put him back in the ring in April. And then we have another kid from Cincinnati. He's a problem. Six foot lightweight. And his six name, foot lightweight. Six yeah, foot lightweight. You don't see that. Yeah, and his name is Javon Dula. This kid is really, really freaking good, man. Um, highly decorated amateur, multiple time national champion, uh, won regional championships, won state championships. This kid can box. He's well decorated. Decorated yeah, amateur. Just came back from being in camp. Uh, was in camp with the Crawford Group. Was getting uh, Keyshawn Davis ready for Yo, his that, last fight. That, nice. that Crawford group is building some some good champions. Like, yeah, look, I mean, I mean uh, uh, Bo Mack and his team are really good trainers. They're 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 very cerebral about the way they approach fights, and you know they have experience because um, they obviously have it from the fights with Terrence's whole career has been successful, but also with Jamel, right? Because they were with us when we won the world title, right. and they helped us go ahead and get there, and and oh. they played a big factor. So. How, how yeah. much does the coach play a factor when it comes into, like, management and all that? I mean, it, it, it helps. It helps uh, tremendous because, look, uh, I'm not in the gym. Mm-hmm. I'm not in the gym every day. I'm, I'm not I'm not the guy that holds the mitts. I don't train the fighters. I don't pretend to be a trainer. Right. You know, I know the sport. I know what I'm seeing. But I need help. And that only comes You don't comes pick the I, coaches, right? The fighter I picks? do play the input in that yeah? because, yeah, I, I look. I, Have you ever had to, like, hey, man, we got to replace this coach with a. It happens. You yeah. know, look, sometimes mom, dad, whoever has brought you as long as far as they're going to bring you. Mm-hmm. And then I'll, I'll say this. I'm going to let you go with this, but I have other plans. And I've had fighters that have said, oh, man, my dad got me to this level. And I'm like, okay. And I give you a little bit of wiggle room. But then. If we have a setback where I don't see something, got to make a change. Yeah, and I'm you know, like, I'm not gonna hide my. I'm on not that. gonna throw a rock and hide. Yeah, my, yeah, yeah, I'm about to touch on that. I'm not on gonna. Th- I'm not, I'm not gonna. No, I'm, I'm not gonna throw a rock and, and hide my hand. I'm gonna say, yeah. hey Ben, the result we had or the result we didn't. You give have, them a chance. You give yeah, them a chance. Yeah, but, All right, this is what you believe. Go ahead, but hey, if this doesn't work, then let's yeah, try because out we gotta my. Make, we gotta make because I'm vocal. I'm saying, look, uh, look, this is cool, but at some point. You can't be taught what that person doesn't know. Right. Right. And there's another level. I feel like you're, you're and speaking the, to someone. <laughs> and the only way that we get there is if we do somebody right. Somebody right. knew. Yeah, somebody look, I've had, I, 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 I've had a tell fighter, dad's got to take a step back now. Right. Speaking of dads. And, Yo, uh, so, yeah. <laughs> I, I think we're, 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 we already know where we're going. We're, go ahead. Take yeah, a yeah, little We're both dying to ask this, gonna, man. But uh, ahead, ahead. after Thursday's fight, you know, I couldn't help. But do you feel that tail needs to make that adjustment? Just, just, just because of this, me personally as a fan watching, Dad wasn't giving good advice in the corner. He kept saying, "Keep putting pressure and throw combinations," but that wasn't the right adjustment. The right adjustment was cut the ring, and you know, yeah, try yeah. to beat Jermaine to his outside. Yeah, look, full discretion. I mean, for for everybody watching this, is a, I work with Jermaine Ortiz, all right? So, yeah, okay. Jermaine's my guy, and, and um, like I'm, I'm all team Jermaine. Yeah, you know, yeah. like that's my guy. So. I thought on our end that Jermaine was very smart. A couple of things. Jermaine was very smart about the way he approached the fight. Mm -hmm. Because anybody that asked him all week, you know, they have a fighter interview before they, uh, after they weigh in. Mm -hmm. The the television people meet with them and ask him. So Tim Bradley and all these folks from ESPN. Tim said he got played. And yeah, yeah, because they ask him, what are you going to do, right? What are you going to do? And I've sat on these things so many times. They'll ask you and like, look, man, it's like, it's a it's a poker game, right? I'm not gonna show you my cards, right? So he tells Tim, "Well, I'm gonna knock him out and this and that, right?" And then you know he's saying it, he's sticking to his strict, and then he gets in there sold he, on on that being a a clash because Jermaine normally comes forward, yeah. And and he got you know this isn't the first time that he's in the ring with Tio. He had been in there with him as an amateur, amateur, yeah. So he was like, okay, like I'm not intimidated by this guy. I'm I'm taller than he is. I have some attributes that he doesn't have, right? I think I'm the more athletic guy. I think I'm the longer guy. I think I'm the faster guy. And I think I have the better footwork. And he used all his tools, plus what well, we're talking about, it, right? Because he's generally trained by his uncle. And then he brought in a, a, a Cuban, Cuban coach. Guy, yeah. And we all know, like, you know, Cubans, the Cubans the like, box. like you know, La Escuela Cubana de Boxeo, mm-hmm. you know, which is Cuban school of boxing. And, like, they're very cerebral about the way they approach. Mm-hmm. And, you know, to a certain extent, it's like 
they they defense first, right? Because we don't want to get hit. But at the same time, like they're gonna make life complicated for you, right? And they can make you look foolish. You know, mm-hmm. look, Arislandi Lara comes to mind. Not a very action packed fight, but, but he made Canelo hand. look very silly. That left hand, he, he made Canelo look very very silly. He's fighting again. Yeah, and March look, 30th. and then guys need to understand that you're not always gonna go ahead and get it served up your way. Mm-hmm. This isn't Burger King. You know, you can't have it your way. You got to go ahead and go out and get it. You got to adjust. Look, a great fighter, this is what I'm going to say what I'm going to say. A great fighter makes adjustments mm-hmm. and understands how to make them. Right. Cuban fighters, we're talking about Cuban style. Diabolus Hurtado, a gold medalist. Diabolus Hurtado, Cuban gold medalist, was boxing the ears off of the late, great Pernell Whitaker. Hall of Famer. Rest in peace, Pernell. Boxing his ears off. Pernell... Is sitting pretty, I think contract already signed, waiting to fight De La Hoya. Mm-hmm. And this is going on. 11th round comes, Pernell goes, I've had enough. This, I'm, you know, I can't let this keep on going. Cuts the ring off, and Pernell wasn't considered a big <clears throat> puncher at 147 pounds with the belt weight, and he let them go. He made the adjustment. He made the adjustment, cut the ring off, and ended up knocking the guy out through the ropes. Mm-hmm. The guy was laying on the ropes, knocked Done. out. Done. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's the sign of a great fighter. Right. You know, so everybody goes, Oh man, this and that. It takes two to tango. Mm-hmm. Look, oh, this and that. He moved and this. what do you not, want me to not, do? Not only that, bro, but to show your frustration and to be in the middle of the ring, like, ah, oh, like come like it, it, well, couldn't, the fans it's can't silly. fight for you. It's you know? silly. The fans can't fight couldn't for you. now couldn't you argue that both ways though? I mean, cause some are saying that yeah, Theo could have cut off the ring, but then others are also saying that Jermaine could have also been more offensive. So couldn't you really? Yeah, look, but well, you, look, you, it, you it, can't you can't get what you want without going ahead and getting it. Like, look, um, I understand that Daniel Alon was a tall fighter, right? And and you may have to uh, YouTube this, but Daniel Alon was a tall fighter, way bigger than Sugar Ray Leonard. Sugar was in his later years, but it was a world title fight, and Daniel Alon was undefeated, and he was bothering Ray, mm-hmm. and Ray made adjustments. You know, Molly whopping him late and knocked him out and, and won the titles. It great fighters can make adjustments. Right. Terrence, I've seen him with my own eyes. Make oh, yeah, side, Terrence, yeah. Terrence, yeah. Where, where 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 you know look switch southpaw orthodox. I, I think box, I think Bowman southpaw. was telling him in the twelfth round, hey, you're you're losing a porter. They're trying to take it from you. You're losing it. And he went out there and knocked him, right, knocked right, him out. Right, yeah. You know, look, that's the sign of a great fighter. I think the word great is overused nowadays. Mm-hmm. I think they want to say everybody's great. Everybody's not great. Right. It's okay to be it's a very good fighter. Way. It's okay to be a very good fighter. That's fine. You know, let's save the great the great for, for for the greats, you know, right. and, and you know, yeah. it's it's okay, you know, like it's just to, one of those things. To answer your question, man, if Tail would have cut that ring, he would have he would have forced Jermaine to fight. Right. But but he 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 couldn't make he didn't know how to make that adjustment. Yeah. And and if you force him to fight there's something for you. Yeah. He's gonna come for you. It's kind of like when, when when Tail told him come to the corner. Jermaine Jermaine didn't hesitate. He look, jumped. Him. I'll tell you this. He jumped on him. Jermaine fought one of his other guys. You know, one of the other guys that my partner did. Mm-hmm. That's how we all got. You know, how built a working relationship. But Jermaine fought Jamel, mm-hmm. and Jamel cut the ring off and forced mm-hmm. him to fight. And there was a fight for that mm-hmm. because Jermaine was like, "Okay, you're gonna make me fight. We're gonna fight." And Jermaine let him go. Yeah. And then the same thing with Lomachenko, right? Lomachenko tried to force him to fight, and Lomachenko got got lit up. Mm-hmm. He, he got that was touched. A tough fight. He got, it, that was the most Loma has ever been hit. Mm-hmm. Loma got hit more in that fight than he ever did against Teal. So, so I mean, in your opinion, we know your team, Jermaine, but right. do you think Jermaine won that fight? Uh, uh, listen, my phone was blowing up. My phone was blowing up. People telling me, you guys, he's pitching the shutout. He's up. He's big. He's this and that. So you were shocked. And, I, and I'm like, I'm watching it. I'm like, okay. And I'm trying not to pay attention to that because you at the end the of the day, I'm like, look, <laughs> you got to close the show and we got to do what we got to do. Judges. But I, and- I, 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 look, so many people text me after the fight. And obviously, we talked about it. I think he won the fight. I think he didn't get the decision because he's not Roy Jones. He's not Floyd Mayweather. He doesn't have, the he doesn't have that name, you know. And um, I think, you know, it, it was one of those things where. Tim Bradley went on a rant about it and said that, look, this is called boxing. It's not, um, uh, you know, a tough man contest. You got to reward the guy 
for showing you defense, yeah. a mixture of offense, and and ring generalship. He controlled that fight. Mm-hmm. The f- if I ask you this, if you don't know anything about boxing, but I ask you at the end of that fight, who imposed their will? Who who whose style fight was that? Was that Jermaine's making Tio go along with it, or was it Tio's making Jermaine go along with it? It was Jermaine making Tio yeah. go along with his style. Yeah, yeah. I guess you could say that because it felt like, I, for me, it felt like Dale was chasing him, which I guess you can argue that that's what Jermaine wanted. And, and that's the third time that it's happened. Yeah. You, you know, look, it, um, it happened with Cambosis, and he lost. And he also got dropped in that fight. It happened with Sandor Martin. I was about to say, yeah. He, he was frustrated by a boxer. Got dropped. Got dropped and put on his ass. And it happened with, with now with, with Jermaine. There, there is a blueprint there to beat him, you yeah. know. And and listen, I mean, I think a lot of people got excited because he beat Josh Taylor the way he did, mm-hmm. but they didn't also realize that maybe Josh has a lot of miles, and inactivity is a is, is not good for anybody, mm-hmm. even a veteran fighter. And and he was just at the right place at the right time, and, and was a fresher of the two. Yeah. You you'd want a rematch between these two? Yeah, if possible, of course. Yeah. We'd we we'd love a rematch. Well, Jermaine said they were gonna appeal the decision, right? Yeah, I mean it's just tough to go ahead and get that the commission to go ahead and admit, hey, our three guys were wrong. Oh, this and that. Yeah. I mean one seventeen, one eleven is crazy. Yeah, you know, yeah. like like we're gonna do everything. In my we're... opinion, one one fifteen thirteen all across the board or Jermaine didn't shit. drop like, Dale though, right? No. No, but no. but he, he went ahead and uh landed the bigger shots and the just the more telling shots. When he would land, you would go ahead and see, like, you know, I've seen so many of the pictures that were shot from that night from ringside photography, and Jermaine was landing his straight left, snapping Teal's head back, the right hooks. Like, oh, he looked good. He yeah, looked good. And, and he fought as a southpaw, yeah. which is, that, that's he's a righty, yeah. and he fought as a southpaw mm-hmm. the whole night. That's, that's that. impressive, you know? Would you um? Would you think of uh, Deus's, uh post- Talk. Oh, wow. I don't know. It's what bizarre, it's... man. Hey, listen, I mean, <laughs> we had a good laugh about it. It's yeah. like he started off good. He was like, "You want to fight me?" And then it's just like, "We're all human," and oh, you know, man, like, I, yeah. I get what he's trying to do, but we recently uh, saw there wasn't uh, a uh, connection. <clears throat> yeah, look, I mean, listen, I think um, yeah, I know where he went. Ro- Roly says that he's got. So, look, man, I have my own. Opinion. And by the way, by the we're, he's half Honduran. I'm yeah. fully Honduran. So you know, obviously we got a little love for look, Dale. But even that post conference, I was like, "What's look, my boy doing, look, man?" I'll, like, I'll, I'll say this: when what, he said, "What's going uh, on?" Why, why he bringing up Rosa Parks? Yeah, <laughs> well, bro. I mean, I respect like, to Rosa, but it's like uh, you just what? I, I was like, "Listen, man, it, it's 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 goofy. You know, it's goofy. Um, it makes him seem like he's kind of not fully up there. Like, look, you know, um, I think he reads he, a lot and tries to quote a lot, but he doesn't know how yeah. to put it together. He listen, re- look, he listen, ain't man. Read shit. They always enduring. I love him, but he ain't reading shit. Look, look, man. He brought up a book to that fucking guy. He wasn't reading that Bro, shit. Bro, I'm like, listen, you're you're sitting up there with a towel you can do. I read that thing right. when I was like eight years old, right? There you go. Come on now. Because it, it's, it's simple, like little paragraphs. There's, look, br- <laughs> it, just full of script. that book is full of notes that bruce made at a period in his life where he was trying to go ahead and make things it, it's not it wasn't a full written book it was just a series of little notes and 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 quotables it's like someone trying to go ahead and tell you that they're a philosopher and all they've got for you is like a bunch of oscar wilde quotes i'm like dude, stop like yeah. context please and you know he's sitting here quoting rosa parks and all that stuff i'm like chill Listen, so, somebody take the mic. Even the guy interviewed yeah. and kind of laughed. No one's like, ever gonna, con- you know, convince you for, you know, or mistake you for a member of Mensa. Like, stop right. it, bro. Right, right, yeah. right. You're yeah, good nah. at what you do. Stick to that. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Nah. But so what? He day, should he should fire his dad then, right? I I personally think he needs to he needs to make that that move, man. I mean, pops is pops, but based on on the Combosis fight, it, pops had no adjustments. Yeah. yeah. In this I, fight, I think it's I, what you just said. There was no adjustments made. And fucking Tim Bradley on the fucking fight the whole time, he's like, he's got to cut it off. he yep. got to cut it It's like we yeah. all saw what he saw, and apparently mm-hmm. they didn't see that. Look, a fight is weird. In their the mind, they're, they're very hard-headed. That's what, that's what it looks like. And in their mind, he didn't want to fight. But it's like, nah, you got to make adjustments. You got, you got to. They were. What was? What, what did? What his dad say? His dad was yelling like, "Yeah, we had to fly to reach Jermaine. Like that's how much Jermaine was running. Like we mm-hmm. couldn't even. Ca- we had to throw a flying punch. Oh, yeah. Stop nah. it! Like, look, you got to cut the fucking ring. Yeah, you're. you're <laughs> look, listen, your son's got clumsy feet. He can't cut the ring off. It's it's ridiculous, you know. Like and he can't he can't fight moving forward. No, look, it, it make adjustments. The 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 fight is really. What you do on fight night is a culmination of what you've done in camp. Mm-hmm. 
And if you can't do it in, on fight night, right. you never tried it in camp. Right. You never touched base about it. Like, it's unfamiliar to you. Yeah. And that showed, that fight showed, again, his limitations. Mm-hmm. Look, I think him calling out Crawford is ridiculous. But Crawford I, I is that's the most, too. like, complete fighter in the world. Crawford you know? would tear I think just Crawford up. got a name now, you know. The, the people know that's, yeah, that's but, a money fight. But Bud's I mean, a dog, yeah, man. But yeah, he's yeah. Got, Bud's a dog. He's and, the adjuster. Well, he like you, you, if, you, he, if, you, if, if you catch him, he'll adjust so that you don't catch him again. And, and look, if, if Bud hits you with any of the shots that, that Jermaine touched you with, it's a wrap, Jack. Mm-hmm. You're going to get hurt because yeah. Bud, it, Bud is like a video game where when he hits you that one time and that coin comes out of your head, mm-hmm. he's going to keep on hitting you until that <laughs> point. He's going to cash you in. So yeah, true. so, like, you're not going to, you know, are you serious? Even I the way it. he fought he's, against Spence, bro, he was like he looked like a street fighter. The way he was holding his hands and just, bah, 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 bah. You, he's, he, you know, Bud is a guy that never walks into the ring unprepared. Mm-hmm. He's prepared. And I just, I've been around him and I've talked to him. And the guy's very... Cerebral he's a smart guy. and matter of fact about what he wants to do in there. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, like he's a clean liver. He lives clean. Mm-hmm. He's very, very like uh, lives that Spartan lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And he's always in and around the gym. He's not a guy that you got to worry about him blowing up and weight and, and doing yeah. all this. He's things. always in shape. He maintains. Yeah, he's in shape. And that's, that's what prolongs your career and allows you to do these things mm-hmm. late into your 30s because you took care of yourself. You, care of you yourself. invested you know, in your you're not body. Spent. Right. Nah, man, I'm glad to see Crawford's finally getting that recognition, man, because he had been putting in work for a while. Of course, And people yeah. were still downplaying him. Yeah, know? look, it was easy to say he's never going to do that. He's on the wrong side of the street. He's never going to do that over here. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, look, Arrow was their most beloved guy of a certain section of fans, right, mm-hmm. that were all like, oh, yeah, they used that as an excuse, right? It's like talking trash to the dog that's behind the fence, right? Yeah. The dog's yeah. barking and you're just popping him with the newspaper. What you going to do? The <laughs> moment that fence is open... Oh, uh, you're not right, as brave, yeah, right? You're in trouble. And that's what happened with Crawford. <laughs> Crawford, okay, now he's on this side of the street, and, and where's the excuses, you know? And right. like, So let me ask you this. Uh, what do you think about Crawford and Canelo? Because obviously uh, Crawford is entertaining that. Canelo looks like he's entertaining as well. Well, Canelo, they just announced he's fighting the other brother? No, no that's not no. official. Yeah, that's not so official. Did, please don't. Yeah. Yeah. Canelo, please Canelo don't. went on. so boring. I, I'd rather him fight Benavides next. Look, hour. Canelo went on Mexican television, and he announced which – he did a deal with this uh, oh, I saw TV that. distributor in Mexico, and yeah, and he went ahead and announced that he's renamed the year, f- the fight, f- the the contract for another year, mm-hmm. and that his fights will continue to be free in, in Mexico, Mexico, no pay per view. But he also went ahead and said a couple of things that his next fight will be against an American, American right. not a Mexican. Now, an American, okay, okay. right? An American, so American. Right. out of the picture. Now, when they were asking him about who, what network are you on, and it's not, he was very, very vague. You know, he was like saying. Well, the network saw his change in America. Mm-hmm. We're like, okay. And then he's like talking. And my my belief is that I think Ken Ellen has been sold on the idea of like Crawford. And I don't think Crawford is a guy that's going to turn down a fight like that. And if, Big money. Yeah, yeah, you know, and look, man, Charlo, I just saw him. He's on vacation. He's out yeah. there. Looks like he's, he's in Turks. Yeah, right look, he looks like he's been doing Drinking. shots and yeah. jumping in the water. He don't deserve doing that a couple podcasts paycheck. with he's, whiskey and he, stuff. Look, yeah, look, I got fighters that are fighting in April and they're going to the camp next week. Yeah, and the week after, they're, if you're fighting in May, you would already start pre camp and start moving around. Right, February is almost over. Mm-hmm. So when are you going to get into camp again? Yeah, nah. Not only that, man, but if I'm Canelo, I'm not going to give this guy a, a big payday like that. If he ain't taking it seriously, because to me, it's a that's flop, the only though. reason why Charlie would take that fight is for that big payday. It's it's a uh, right. It's 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 one way more rewarding for one guy mm-hmm. than another. I have a hard time believing that Crawford. I mean, I'm sorry that Canelo is going to go ahead and be motivated to fight this guy because the fight does nothing for him. I feel like uh, I well, agree. look, um, Canelo has he signed a contract with PBC, so he right. has two more fights under that deal. I feel like if he doesn't. It, you might as well do the Benavides fight in Cinco de Mayo. I think it would be big. Um, do that personally, either. though, I'd rather see Benavides fight David Morrell Jr. I feel like they size up perfectly. Mor- Morrell is the guy that the 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 dark, you know, he, he's he's very much the the guy that nobody wants to fight. Right? right. He's the boogeyman. Yeah, right he's now. the boogeyman of that division because he's very dangerous. Mm-hmm. Cuban, very athletic, very strong puncher. 
and he's patient. He's not a guy that's going to go in there and just like and he's try to fast. Oh yeah, and he can hit. You know, so that kid is is real deal. Uh, somebody's going to have to give him an opportunity, and it may be Benavides that has to do it. Mm-hmm. Canelo, on the other hand, I think Canelo looks at Crawford and goes, "Okay, oh, he's no spring chicken. I'm no spring chicken, mm-hmm. and he'll be coming up and wait." He's talked himself into like all these advantages, the variables. things coming off his biggest. Fight. Yeah, all yeah. these variables and things of why he should fight him, and uh, and Bud is looking his chops because Bud loves to prove people wrong. Yeah, and show you why he's as great as he thinks he is. You know, yeah. and uh, look, I mean, what do you think? I gotta respect that though. You gotta one be guy's gonna defeat it, right? <laughs> yeah. and, and and one guy's coming from lightweight, well, one hundred forty pounds. Twice. Bud's, uh, you know, champion at lightweight, 140 pounds, 147. And, I mean, if he goes up to 68, man. That'll be history. You know, I think he's already got a Hall of Fame career, Bud. And, uh, I if, hope so. If, yeah, of course. And of course. With, with his accomplishments. And then if he goes ahead and does this, like, hey, man, you know. First ballot. Hall yeah, first ballot, man. That guy <laughs> is a all-time great, you know. Like, yeah. it's, it's, it's still beating Canelo, the version of that you have right now. Very impressive. You don't think Crawford like entertaining like boots and all that? That's no, not worth his time. No. No. Those guys no. need to prove it against somebody else, right? Yeah, well, I, I feel like I feel like for Canelo, there's really not many options out there anymore. You know, it's either you you fight Benavides or yeah. you fight Crawford. A bit. Who else is? I mean, Bivol and 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 uh, that's one se- that's one seven, yeah, seventy look, five, right? Bivol and, 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 and Better Biaf are fighting each other. Yep. They're getting ready for their fights. On that note, man, what do you think about the um, the excellence of putting all these fights here? Look, so we were talking about boxing earlier, just like the state of it and fights not being made. Once in a while, we do get situations like this where somebody, an entity, somebody comes in and and influences what happens, right? Mm -hmm. And we're getting it right now. So, like... Hey man, God bless that man. Like yeah. that man is is a fan of the of the fights. He's making these big fights, and he's making things happen. Who is this? It's 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 it's, it's, you know it's uh, his name's Turkey. He's a, a you know. The excellence, like, yeah, is that like considered like the king or the president? He, he's a very influential person in uh, oh, like the Saudi guy? in Saudi, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah okay, and I, uh, I mean, uh, look, the man has it's not oil money, has little Wayne and, and Anthony Hopkins coming to play the piano for him, and mm-hmm. and he's got you know, uh, what's his name, um, uh, Kevin Costner standing there in a suit watching yeah. him in a tuxedo. Like, <laughs> th- these people of, of renowned names are going to see him, and right. then he puts together a fight where he brings. A who's who of boxers and UFC fighters, MMA fighters. Money. You know, and he's doing the Bellator versus PFL. Yeah. He's paying yeah. for that. Well, he's but, doing the, what, the Joshua and the Nagano? Is right. It? He's paying for all that. So, listen, man, this is a man that wants to see the good fights. Right. And, and uh, bravo to him, you know. like God whoa. bless his heart. Uh, yeah, yeah, man, yeah. right? We, we, we reap the benefits of Yeah, we need that, man. Best fans. And I feel like 2023 was the start of all that, of right. the best fighting, the best. You know, the year started with Caleb Plant, Benavides. That was a dog fight. I was rooting for Caleb Plant. I, I, you know, I, I love his story. I love Caleb the, signed a shirt for him. So he, oh, yeah, okay. he did <laughs> yeah, he just signed my shirt too. But uh, nah, man, like Caleb's story, you know, who he is, where he comes from, what he had to overcome. Um, and just I, I thought he showed a lot of heart against Benavides. Yeah, look, I mean, it was a. I, I, and then I, from there, we went on to the tank and Garcia. You know, I felt like last year was that year where we finally got the well, big fights. I mean, listen, fighters, are, you can either go ahead and take the fights and, and make them happen, or you're going to die on the vine. Mm-hmm. You're going to die on the vine like a like a rotten grape, right? Because you, you can't go ahead and pass on fights. That's what I always tell fighters, man. You just said there's no Hall of Fame for There's no Hall of Fame in. for passing on fights, man. Look, it was a p- pandemic. Jamal wanted a big fight. Before the pandemic, we we're talking about fighting Carl Frampton, the great Carl Frampton, in the soccer stadium. Mm-hmm. We're willing to go to Ireland. Let's do it. 20, 30, 40,000. Let's do it. And Jamal was just like, You work out the deal, make it an even playing field, and I'll go fight. I said, Okay, great. And then the pandemic happens. And um, we had to get creative. So the fight happened in the middle of the pandemic. We did in Dubai. And if, if anything, Jamel was the first one that did the big started, fight. He Saudi, pioneered you know? that. Yeah, and, 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 you know, out there overseas, and he did it. It was like, man, and, you know, we kind of like, it was frowned upon because they were like, oh, these guys went and did their own thing and everything, creative finance and whatever you want yeah, That's just it. jealousy, though, people. And yeah, it's, it's one of those things. But, like, you know, like we, we my job is to uh, do right by the fighter. Right. And I did right by him. And he was happy with it, and then we came home, and it's like, great. Okay, you knocked out Carl Frampton. Oh shit! 
So now there was the Shakur fight, right? And Jamel's a champ. Shakur was the number one uh, challenger. And I told Jamel, look, we're here to fight. So I'm going to go ahead and make the best deal that we can make. And uh, your job will be to get ready and, and perform. And that was that. And then, you know, we, we made the fight. And uh, Jamel did the best that he could go ahead and do in that fight. And uh, there was he no was shame in it, it, you know, because it's prize fighting. And, you know, I'm sure he looked at his bank account and said, okay, we're good. You know, like, <laughs> hey, it doesn't mean I didn't try. It just means that, you know, this helps ease the pain because you're like, okay, cool. Like, styles make fights. And and in boxing, it's always one of those things that where sometimes you're the hammer and sometimes you're the nail. Not only that, but he, he kind of like, in, in, in that fight, I feel like he passed down the, the torch to Shakur because he gave Shakur that opportunity to fight. Yeah, Shakur. look, I mean, Shakur is a generational fighter, right? And um, if you lose to Shakur... There's no harm, you know, there's no... Which like, Shakur are we talking about? Shakur Stevenson. Oh, okay. And so, like, it, you know... Are we talking about Tupac Shakur or what? <laughs> no, yeah. I'm just... Uh, I don't know. His last performance was... Yeah, little... well, that's a different story. But, like, <laughs> you know, look, Jamel lost him, and it's okay, you know? Like, I was like, okay, you know, it doesn't mean... And then, you know, look, we went ahead, and, uh, and and Jamel didn't say, oh, you know, I want soft touch or anything. No, look, he took some time off, came back, and when he came back, we said, okay, let's do something at 35, because... We were really looking at when we were going to come back. We wanted Burchell. Mm -hmm. Burchell was tied up. Something was going on with him. He had just got knocked out by. Uh, Valdez. We wanted that fight, mm. and then uh, oh no, he wants to fight Valdez because. Or let's. Uh, I just want to make this clear. Val, when Jamel was champ, we decided to go that route. So he beat um, the Japanese fighter uh, Ito, mm -hmm. and Ito was a, a really good fighter, a world champion, defended the belt. So Jamel beats Ito. All boxes and uh very, very good fight where he showed his skill set. So then Burchell has his belt. And then Burchell went out of his way to be at Jamel's fight, jump in the ring and want to do the stare out and all this and that. And I'm like, okay. Fight up. I'm Mark like marketing. Is, yeah, okay, good. You want to fight us? Great. Uh, we'll go to Mexico to fight you. We don't care. And then real quick they had a I think he realized how big Jamel is and everything. He got in there. He's like, hold oh, on man. a second. <laughs> yeah, he had a change of heart, right? And he was like, oh, no, no, no. He did no. the stare and he said, no, nah, I don't he's want like, this one. You know what? I'll be, I'll be back. Yeah, I'll fight and, Valdez. He's a little shorter than and, me. And he fought Valdez. And how Valdez did that go for him, right? Him. So, look, when he fought Valdez and that whole thing happened, like, we're watching the fight and Jamel's in camp. He was getting ready for Jermaine. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jamel goes, damn it, you know? Like, I knew I could do that to him. And I was just like, yeah, what are we going to do, right? Um, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. But I was like, and, but we tried. We tried to make that fight. Yeah. We tried to make the Conceal fight. Conceal was having visa problems. Um, we tried to fight Kami, Richard Kami. Kami, um, whatever the problem, he wouldn't accept the fight. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, they gave us a bunch of other names that were like young kids at top rank that didn't really make sense. And kind of looked around the room and we said, all right, like, Hey, Jermaine Ortiz makes a lot of sense. He fought Adorno, beat him on a top rank show. He fought on Showbox, and he had some good wins, and he was undefeated. Yeah. So, you know, if we're going to risk it, let's risk it against a good fighter, you know? Mm -hmm. So where do you see uh, boxing going this year, 2024? We got some got some fights lined up. Um, you know, I guess the big fight that's coming up now is uh, Thurman and Zoo. How do you see that playing out? It, look, for Zoo, it's an introduction Zoo. To the American audience, right? Right. Because people they want are, to start marketing him out here, right? Look, he's a he's a rock star back home because people are really behind him now that they see he's like his dad. He has that big power, right? He's a uh, he's taller than his dad. He's he, active. He's imposing. And he's active, right? Mm -hmm. And he's very humble. You know, he's a humble kid. Um, I think that Keith Thurman is in over his head. He's a veteran, but. Well, he's doing what he needs you know, to do look, to sell the fight. He's going to try to sell the fight, but... He's kind of annoying to me. Because it's paper. He is, right? And, and yeah, it's like... I like it. Look. I, he's got a good person, but you, you, Zoom, can, you can what tell... what you going to do? <laughs> it's corny. I feel like you it's can corny, tell... Yeah. It is, it's corny. I feel like you can tell when he's... Uh, not be, being be like he's not time. like he's not being himself like he's you can tell he's just doing that to promote right. you know what well, i'm I saying feel like i feel like keith thurman has, has put himself in a position where when he runs out of money he comes to box you know yeah and look i give zoo credit because zoo is went ahead and said you're right about that mm -hmm. 
Zoo is went ahead and said, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, you're, you're right definitely about right about that. And he understands. Yeah, look, look hey, yeah, no, no, he, he, you can he lay knows, on the, you can knows, lay on the couch he, for so he long. Knows, he and knows. then it's like, you start looking at your bank account and I mean, you're like, uh, come on, bro. Zoo, I'll fight Zoo. Yeah, I, I was I trying to take bike. a fight, you know what I mean? Right, exactly. Like, Oh, who is you? I'll take him. I'll take him. Bro, he, he ain't fooling me. He just had a second baby. Yep. You know, he, he. I get it. Fatherhood, probably adjusting all that. But you need that college I know that, money. I know, I know yeah, that money. That, running yeah. low. that college tuition. Yeah, the money, pamper, man. Pampers and formula costs a lot of money, it's right? Like, it's like it's like hey, yo, here's Zoo, but it, it's not for the belt. He's like, I right, fuck it, whatever. I'll take it. Uh, but 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 it wasn't for the belt because it, Keith they, Thurman can't it, be ranked because inactivity. The, the the no the sanction body said, what have you done at 154 pounds? Nothing. We'd be violating our own rules. By ranking you. Ouch. We're not a charity. We're not going to give you a title shot. Yeah. Cool. Fight our champion in a non-title fight. Right, and, right. And, and then if you get knocked out, <laughs> you just got knocked out. And that's what's going to happen. So, I think Zoo's going to knock him out. Yeah, so I think, well, you know, like uh, thinking at a business perspective, uh, you know, Keith Thurman saw the opportunity. Oh, pay per view, for him. At least pay-per-view fight. Him. So he's, and he understands Zoo is coming from Australia. He's not a big draw here. So he knows that he's going to have to carry that pay-per-view fight. Yeah, look, Zoo's people understand that their money is getting made back home mm-hmm. because the distribution and all that, they have the rights for that. They're going to make money back home selling it to Australian TV. Mm-hmm. Zoo is a big draw over there. He's a son of a legend, and he's actually won a world title. And then his name has been in the in the news where he's saying the right things, right? Mm-hmm. He knows who he's fighting. It's Thurman, but he's talking about Crawford because he's like, Okay. He's already thinking. Yeah, look, if Bud's got no dance partner, let's go. Let me handle this, and let's go. And, he, ain't, and he ain't afraid to fight nobody. I don't think he is, man, yeah. and neither was his father. So, you know, I, I admire that, man, because, like, he's, you know, he's yeah. definitely not hiding behind his name or hiding behind. <laughs> or and his father doesn't even show up to the fight. Mm-hmm. His father allows him to have his own limelight, and I'm not going to steal the thunder from right. him, you know? But you do your thing. Kinda yeah, like and, you know, senior and well, junior. there's a lot of, uh, I'm not, without naming names, there's a lot of fathers that want the limelight uh, more that's than, so than their sons. And I'm like, dude, let your oh, son do you say mean, something. Do you mean, uh... <laughs> yeah, right? You know, like you had oh, you, him and him, yeah, you know? I like, agree. that's how, look. I agree, and I'm not a fan of that. Fight weeks, uh, uh, like... It's like dads not, trying I, to live through their kids. You yeah, know? look, like, I'm not scared yeah. to talk, and I'll say what I say, and it rubs some people the wrong way. But come fight week and all this stuff, listen, I let the fighters do the interviews, and I let them talk and say this and that. I don't have to jaw jack another fighter. I've done that before, mm-hmm. and, you know, I was like, I had to tell the other fighter, like, bro, like, really? Like, come on, man. And I, it wasn't, I said, I'm not scared of you. Yeah. You know, no disrespect, I'm not scared of you. Like, I'm good, bro. Yeah. I, I, You know. You're not gonna put hands with me. Yeah. I'm gonna ragdoll you if I want to because only one of us can do more than box. Like I, right. you know, I can wrestle, I can take it down, I can do whatever I want with you. And Jamal laughed because Jamal was like, "Bro, you're barking up the wrong tree. You're out, you're you're messing with my manager. This dude's looking at you like he's thinking about how he wants to ragdoll you." Uh-huh. And I'm just like, "Look, let the fighters do the jaw jacking." You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So because it's like, uh, if the fighter, if you can't ever let them do their own talking. Then they don't develop. They don't too. develop, and it's it's professional fighting. Mm-hmm. You have to take a little bit of the WWE, like because check it out, Jamel. That's one of the reasons that I liked him from the beginning because he is a fan of wrestling mm-hmm. and he understands that this is all a show. You got it, you know. Yeah, the flashiness. It. You got to sell it. The right. part of the sport is when they when the bell rings and they touch gloves mm-hmm. and then they go. That's a sport. Everything else is a business and it's a uh, marketing. Marketing, selling. yeah. And, and look. I have other fighters sometimes that sometimes a fighter will come to me and say, oh, yeah, I want to work with you guys. And then the fighter doesn't want to uh, go online or don't want to promote themselves. They don't want to do things. And then they just, and then they'll come pop up like a. It's kind of like, how, how am I, how, how can I promote you if you can't even promote yourself? Yeah, they'll pop up like a groundhog, right? Like, oh, uh, hey, I, I want to fight again. I'm like, well, where have you been for like two or three months? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. there's people fighting in your division and you're not saying anything. Yeah. You, you, boxing Twitter and even uh, Boxing IG. It's very much. They make you like yeah, if you they go keep on up there, to date. Yeah, how much do you pay attention to that yourself? A like, lot every day. Really, every day. I think right, my phone probably how, tell me how yeah. many hours. It's way too many that I spend. Yeah. Why my though? I, I, li- I like to <laughs> like pick your like brain. Because you oh, said God. earlier you got your degree in marketing. Correct. So I'm actually curious, like, how much did your degree or does your degree help you in what you do? And then two, like why that community? What what's what about? It, it it helps me a lot because I understand 
how to sell things, right? Like what people want. Look, I mean, in college, we're doing ad campaigns for Kia. Okay, and that's what like literally for Kia, Kia the the car the company, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. and and doing actual campaigns where if they don't approve your campaign, you're gonna fail the class, and like you're like, dude, I don't want to pay for this class again, and I'm not trying to stick around an extra year, right? Like this means something, right? Yeah, yeah, and and then it was it's rewarding because you know you figure out, oh, okay, this is how it works, right? Because, um. So much of everything is on your phone now, right? Mm. It's social media, and it's different, right? It's not traditional television and everything like that. I think most people, like we're saying, consume everything on TikTok, social Instagram, media. and social media right, right, platforms. Right. So if you don't know how to market yourself there, you and you're an athlete or an entertainer in today's day and age, you're barking up the wrong tree. Mm. You're 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 out of touch. And, and that's what I always try to go to and tell these fighters. Do you see a lot of fighters that obviously are talented but don't have that marketing? There's like, a lot of fighters that just want to be a fighter. Um, and I'm like, you're, you're in the wrong era. Mm. You're in the wrong era. Listen. This ain't the 20s no more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Look, look, this ain't even the 80s. Like, look, yeah. it, it's crazy because um, you have to put yourself out there. And you have to be willing to want to do more. Mm -hmm. Think about this. There's kids out there. That are going ahead and unboxing toys on TikTok, bro. That have stop, stop, two million stop. followers, and that two million. There's yeah. some fucking kids with sixty five. Like, yeah, and, and it's the, insane. And they're making seven figures a year, and they're living it. But you know what? Someone had to get in their ear and tell them, and then they get it right. The parents. So they'll go ahead and buy themselves their little stand and do what they do, and that's work. I have friends that uh, they have a, uh, um card collecting uh, things where they rip cards online okay and they sell like sell them real time like sports cards stuff? yeah sports cards yeah and they're selling these I used to collect these things like uh, you know they're getting people to buy in mm -hmm. for like 150 200 per rip yeah. and these guys are going like to watch a new rip, rip a new rip every 30 minutes bro I and need i'm that. like jerry yeah. can you help us market like yeah, we need to like, can, yeah, like so i'll sit like, in and i'll walk in and i'll watch this and i'll be like you guys are making a killing yeah. <laughs> you guys are and they're like yeah oh, no bro, that's it's some a real job. shit like there's people that sell like, like a pokemon a job. card no i know i know yeah, they're like it's a job bro like mm -hmm. it's a, it's it's work yeah and i'm like you know what because production and everything goes into it but right. that's all a part of seeing the bigger picture right mm -hmm. so what do you say boxer a box a young boxer that says jerry i don't care so much about the marketing side of the business i just want to be the greatest boxer what <laughs> what do you i'll say listen that's <laughs> that's good and all but you don't understand it the, it's a business. The sport part is if you just want to go ahead and do the sport, good luck. But you may never want to. You may never get where you want to get, Without or you the, may take the long way there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it, you have to market yourself. So really, like the best, the well, best thing to tell a person like that is, okay, that's great. You focus on the boxing side of things, but hire someone, right? Yeah, get yourself like, a marketing you have to be person. Willing. You have to buy into it, right? Because so, for example, um, you know, look. Jamel, when we went ahead and finally said, okay, look, here's what we're going to do. And we had just gotten with top rank, and I would throw things at him, and Jamel would say, okay, great. So I would say, hey, let's go and do this with Snoop Dogg. Okay, great. Hey, let's go and do this with this. Okay, great. Marketing. Hey, I need you to go to I need you to go to go the SP. Marvick Productions a podcast. Right? Hey, look. <laughs> look, I, I would send him all these podcasts, right? I would send him all these different podcasts, and Jamel was like, okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. And that conditioned him to where he doesn't turn down uh, 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 interview. Mm -hmm. He's always even now. I'll hey man, I was calling you. I'm doing a podcast right now. I'll call you back. All right, cool. Yeah. And um, it's just more exposure. Yeah, it's just, and and man. he would go to the like. Let's say for example, we sent him to the ESPYS right. So he went to the ESPY awards. So he gets all dressed up. He goes to the ESPY awards. He's there and he's just not sitting in the seat and being quiet. He's like, oh man, there goes Kofi. I'm gonna mess with him for the WWE. Hey, what's up? This and that. He gets pictures of him, tagging him, to, you know, mess Exposure, around with him. Exposure. Yeah, like, and then that guy. He's running Networking. into different people. Yeah. He runs into uh, Kamara Usman. Mm -hmm. Him and Usman know each other from the uh, IOC, and, and you know, from the Olympic training facility. And they're like talking and you know, taking pictures. He's smart. He's tagging people. He's engaging. Right. Yeah. That's no different than well, social media. Somebody comes on your platform, on your IG, and uh, you post something. And they say something and you just ignore it. You don't say anything back. 
okay, you're not engaging. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You reply back to them, and somebody takes issue with what you said, and now it creates a whole dialogue. Yeah, we love that. Your the engagement con- the controversy. Are up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. Brings the yeah. engagement there. Uh, to answer your question, though, uh, and to kind of piggyback what you're saying, though, I think as a boxer, you got to understand that you're, you are the brand. Right. Your skill set, that's great, but you're a walking billboard now. You got to sell yourself whether who you are, whatever. Somebody's going to buy into that because right. your personal line is going to be re- able to relate to somebody. Look at this kid, Jake Paul. Look at the, look at Ryan Garcia. Yeah. Like, they, they know how to sell to their audience. And right. I personally feel like their audience are immature and, and goofy people. You know, that's but, what but I personally works. feel. But it works. Hey, look, there's a, kid, there's a kid, Neon, right? And I'm like, you Neon? Know, yeah. yeah, I know. Yeah, and I know then, so I, I I ran across him right uh, like that's the that's a skinny dude glasses. yeah I, yeah I ran across him right like accidentally and I'm like why would anybody follow this kid but he seems to be popular with kids and I'm, it's not my <laughs> cup of tea but I get it it's not my hey yeah. uh, and, you and, know you but know but people Sean... cross promote with him right Ryan's right. in a video with him and then uh, all these other yeah, yeah and then Dana even engaged him right mm-hmm. and, you know this and that so hey look. you know you know Sean Strickland. UFC oh, fighter. Yeah, he he just beat one up, right? Well, yeah, he fought he somebody. Um, Sneakos. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah but did you I, see? I did you see what he said about Jake Paul? Like his fights. I maybe it's marketing, but he said that the Dana's right hand. I forget his name, but told him that. Yeah, Hunter, the attorney, the legal. Hunter. Yeah, yeah. I, I think. Yeah, I think that's him. Uh-huh. Well, Jake Paul offered Sean a million dollars, and right. then Sean Star, talked to this right? guy no, to fight him. Right. And then Sean said that. Uh, he was told by the the, the attorney, the yeah, lawyer, legal, yep. that all that shit is fake. That Jake actually just buys a lot of those seats and he gives away free tickets, so they're actually not generating as much money as they're Damn. saying. I don't know yeah. if that's true, but I that mean, could also just I mean, be a marketing cause, move. Cause look, if, if but the, Sean is also <laughs> one of the guys to just say shit but, but and be if, upfront if the, about if it. If the juice was worth the squeeze, they don't let you go and do it. You know, yeah, look, yeah. If, like if he the, did with McGregor Mayweather. Uh, look, and then Woodley said, "Hey, you know." The contract's in, and he went and did what he did, and he fought Jake Paul, right? But if the juice is worth the squeeze, and it's it, it's uh, a good way for not only the fighter, but also the UFC is going to benefit from it, mm-hmm. cool. I, look, we saw it. Dana let McGregor go Yeah, out that's true. It. It's true. Yeah, the cross-promotion. Yeah. What do you think? I'm not know. What do you think about Ngannou? Boxing. I think, I think Ngannou is I thought he definitely... Good, he impressed me against uh, Tyson. He's capitalizing on, on, on his ability to... Make millions. Yeah, he Who's he got next? Uh, uh, AJ. Anthony Anthony Joshua. AJ, Joshua. right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, look, I mean, good for him, man. Yeah. Because you hear about his story. His story, yeah, from it's incredible. Africa to France, and that in itself is like... If that was his only story, I'd be like, wow, that's cra- crazy. That's made for a movie. But the fact that he won the heavyweight title at the UFC, fought our heavyweight champion, and put him on his ass and mm-hmm. now he's out here fighting the former AJ, heavyweight champ about to make more money Look, than he ever made in the if UFC. he knocks out aj holy crap right yeah. like i don't think he's gonna embarrass himself i don't think so. i thought he looked good against either. tyson to be I think, honest he, he impressed me because I, I i didn't i i thought tyson was gonna knock him out i think he has a counter counter punching ability he's a natural fighter he's obviously not scared because well the funny he's thing an is MMA he fighter. said boxing he was, was his first sport right but because of france like i think uh MMA was more a thing in France, and I don't think they had, mm-hmm. you know, um, he had issues with, you know, what he wanted to go into. So that was just his path. But look, kudos to him. Mm-hmm. I think he made something like twenty million in his last fight. So come on, now. hey man, good for him. You know, Dana would never pay him that. Nah, it's a it's a different market. You know, like I I think it's well, boxing is just bigger, right? I think it's different because in, in boxing, mm-hmm. boxing has been around for you know uh, over a hundred years now, and it's also uh, Fighters are yes, you work with a promoter, but you know, you you can uh, the people that work for you have more of a say in determining what your purse is going to be, right? Mm-hmm. But look, he wouldn't be in the position he's in if it wasn't for Dana and them because Dana and them built true. the it's UFC true. and allowed him a place to build his name to where yeah, he could build his brand. Build it, yeah, of build course, itself. like they gave him that and they pumped it's money like his into launching him. pad. Yeah, and they putting him in a video game and doing all those things. Those are things where uh, all these kids that are playing the video game. Knew who he was right, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. now he's reaping the reward. We saw today. him. Was was that with you or was that with Clifton I, I, I think in Vegas? Him. I actually yeah. saw you him. ran into him. We ran into him. In Real Vegas. nice guy, man. He was he was nice, but he was by himself. It was like three a.m. We were drunk. It was like Francis. He, he was like, yeah, nah. <laughs> yeah, he just walked by. I was he, like, he says he, he he's always by himself. Like he's yeah yeah he was by himself. Like he's a fucking monster yeah. of a guy. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's one of those things where, like, I think a lot of look. You brought up Sean Strickland. I think Sean Strickland. I don't know if it's by design or by accident, but he has put himself out there, right? Because the craziest <laughs> it's thing probably is like, both half design right, right. and half accident. But the crazy thing is like Sean Strickland is a guy that would be very happy with just uh, flying under the radar, but he's kind of become mainstream. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he beat. You know, he, yeah. he beat up the champ, and yeah, he became the champ. Mm-hmm. And in doing that, he put himself in all these situations where now people are putting him in different uh, public settings that he's not used to, right? Right. And the more people know his name. So I watched where he was at the power slap last week, and he's getting all these YouTubers to come oh, up to him. yeah. And he doesn't know how to react to them because he's like, who the, who he, the F is this guy, right? He, he, MG, he, MGK he, told, he told one of the guys, if this was a different setting, I'll beat the shit out of you. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a kid that does all the funny things. Yeah. In, oh, in yeah, the a little park. short one. Yeah, but it's uh, just funny to me because it, it, even if he didn't completely buy in, he <laughs> buyed in enough to, like, play the game. Mm-hmm. And he's reaping the benefits of it, right? Because yeah. he got paid to fight, um, you know, uh, Stylebender, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Izzy. And then you know, like, they had to pay him the money for him to fight uh, Duplessis because – Look, I always gauge that how popular a fight is based on like casual fan friends that ask me about a fight. And there's so many people that are asking me about Sean Strickland. I was like, How do you know about is this him? dude? Mainstream guy? Like, yeah. why are they asking me mm-hmm. about Oh, Sean Strickland's gonna fight? I'm like, How do you know who he is? Right, right. And I was like, Okay, he must have crossed over where more people are noticing who he is. And I looked at his numbers, his numbers did go through. Yeah, that yeah, makes yeah. sense. Yeah. That no, makes I mean, sense. Good so. for him, man. I mean, because I remember watching a video of him when he was like showing his house and. Shit was beat up, you know? Yeah, and look, he's a guy that people could take from that. Play the game. Your fights are going to be your fights. What's going to be is going to be. But you can help yourself by putting yourself out there a little, you know? I think McGregor created that blueprint, Started right? That, yeah. yeah, you got to you gotta speak and you got to promote mm-hmm. yourself. If, if you don't, who else is going to do it for right, you? Right, right, right. You got to do it for yourself. On that note, uh, Jerry, any last me- what would you like any to last say? words any last before. words <laughs> what would you like to to say to the camera right here man um yeah no like i mean look we you know i i enjoy my my work because of the fighters i work with like, i could tell you're very yeah, passionate about yeah, it and, look, and it, it's a natural passion it's not like you know yeah i mean because i like you know i, I get to live a little vicariously through their uh, you know accomplishments and everything but it's also like rewarding to go ahead and see you, you had a hand make, in that. You make a roadmap, and then we get there, you know, right. because, like, you know, look, Jamel's on literally one fight away from being right back at a world title. He's fighting in April, I believe April 3rd in Australia, Adelaide, Australia. Mm-hmm. And, you know, God willing, I'll be there too. We're going to go, and uh, he's, he's right back. He's fighting for a, a global title. We'll put him in the position for a world title. April 3rd, you said? April 3rd in okay. Adelaide, Australia. And then, um, you know, I just had um, – you know, met with another fighter the other night. She was a national champion wrestler, uh, Team USA boxer Ooh. that wants to not only do boxing, but she wants to go to the UFC and fight. She wants all the smoke. She wants Ooh. Taylor Harrison. Ooh. She wants uh, uh, Rocky Pennington. You know, she, she wants, wants to go like back and forth from she, UFC. Yeah, boxing? And, and, and then it's That'd like, let's go. And this is somebody that can that was on that level. So those are the fighters that make it fun because. When you get with fighters like that, and then with like even our young kids from Cincinnati, they keep you engaged. Are, yeah, because I'm like, this is okay. This is good. We're we're going, and uh, we're almost there. And then fighters like Jermaine that fight for a world title, and uh, and we're able to do, uh, you know, show them this is how we get there. And then okay, we're at this level now. This is what we can do. It it it, it makes it rewarding, you know, because right. like. Now you're seeing that they're in the mix, and that's where we want to be. And also, I'm mm-hmm. assuming just seeing them grow through that process. You know? Yeah, of course, man. You know, like I mean. If you want to do it and, and you, you know, I treat fighters fair because that's what separates me too. Like, I don't look at it as just a business. I also look at it as like, look, man, I, I got to do right by you, you know. Yeah, with Jack, I, I, I have, yeah, like, I, I look at it like, I, 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 I don't just eat off of boxing. Like, I have a career mm-hmm. outside of boxing and I, I, I do well. I, I you know. I'm not going to be missing any meals anytime soon. What do you do, if you don't mind me asking? Like, just to keep it short. Yeah, I'm in, we I'm got, a, like, five minutes that's before. Cool. Like, I'm in, I'm in the energy industry. Energy? And, yeah, and my clients are the big oil company, so I'm okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. but, uh, like, I I want to work with fighters. I I want to go ahead and help them, and, you know, that's the reason that it's, like, uh, it's a passion for me to get yeah. Jamel to where he I wants to get. I can feel that. To get my Cal to the world title. We talked about it 
today about what the path is for him this year. Yeah. You know, to, to get my kid Dula a pro debut, he's going to fight in April and get him going and get him to a world title. Like, for me, that's the reward, you know, because it's a long way from where, like, I've I, I started with the other fighters and then just really seeing the passion of these kids where, you know, you take them out of a tough city or an environment where they grow up and, you know, look, you know, you put them in a position where they're making the big money, they're Changing living a comfortable life, life. Yeah. they can help their families and, you know, like, that's so. Dope. It's, yeah, it's, that's amazing. That's the reward, yeah. you know. Somebody's life just to change 180. Yeah, yeah. And, and then, look, pay it forward, right, because I always tell them, hey, the same way we did it for you, remember, somebody's watching you. Mm -hmm. Because, look, Jamel, we, we were fighting in Dubai, over here, like, won his fight, world title, and got himself the Corvette he wanted and all this stuff. And I got said, look, nice, yeah. kids in the gym are looking at you. Yeah. And they're inspired by you. So, of, of course, now it's surreal because it's those kids are now our fighters and they're, they're adults, they're young adults, and they're, they're now it's blazing, their the, turn. They're blazing the trail for the next generation, right? Yeah, right. that's amazing. And I feel like that's what Crawford is right now for, that, for this generation of kids that are coming up in this camp. Hey, Sean and all that. Yeah, yeah, look, I mean. It, it, the, There's another kid from Ohio, Johnson, uh, Tiger. They call him Tiger Johnson. Right, he's from Ohio. He's from Northern Ohio. I think he's fighting. Okay. Uh, but, you know, those, weekend, those are kids that, like, I mean, guys like Bud got it because they allowed Jamel to get into the camp mm -hmm. and work with him, and then um, he was willing to help. And Bud's a cool dude, very, very humble. And, uh, you know, as long as Jamel was willing to put in the work, he was willing to go ahead and, and allow him an opportunity to better himself. And then that was the same thing for my other kids that have gotten a chance to be in his camp. Mm -hmm. Like I said, one of my kids, uh, Dula, he just helped Keyshawn for his last fight, and they right away I got the call. Hey, man, Bo yeah. told me. Hey, mm. Bo, Bo told Jamel. Bring him back. Hey, they, this kid's good. He got I serious. like this kid. This kid's yeah. good. He's a six-foot kid, and he can fight. Promising. So. Yeah, so it, it's it's when you get you know Bomax Trainer of the Year, right? For for uh, he was just awarded that, and when the guy like that tells you that the guys you're signing it's a big are, deal, are big talent, that's a co-sign pretty much. Yeah, man, I'm like, let's go. So yeah, you're on the right track. Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah, you got so, a good eye for for talent. Yeah, of course, and yeah. and I, I pride myself on that. I'm, I'm like, gonna send you my uh my YouTube so you can see me and you let me know. <laughs> <laughs> send it over right on. No, nah, man, yeah. but um on that note, Jerry, we just want to thank you. You know, we appreciate uh, your thank time. Thank you guys for having me. You're yeah. very knowledgeable, very passionate, and it's very for me personally because I I don't have the IQ that both of you guys have. My my sports like soccer, but oh, really? I think through him I've gotten into boxing. Oh, I love soccer too, man. Yeah, like, I we we can chop yeah, it up. Yeah, I love soccer. soccer. Yeah, look, it's it's one of those things where I tell fighters all the time, listen, put yourself out there because along the way, like it's it's everyone that in these different realms of sports they're all moving in the same direction to try to be the best, right? Mm -hmm. And then when you get a chance to share platforms with other people, you have to make the most of it. Mm -hmm. So like when Jamel was in camp, I took him to LAFC games and he was getting the whole, and he got to meet Be Real and got to see all these people. Yeah. And it's like, look, dude, this is where the stage you're at. You got to, you know. You got to embrace it. Yeah, you right. got to embrace it. Right. And if you play the game a little bit, it goes a long way too. Yeah. Yep. You're getting where you want to And get. I see you playing the game too, you know, taking hey. the podcast opportunity. Yeah, <laughs> hey, yeah, 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 bro. Matter of oh. fact, man, uh, it'll be nice to have Jamel on here. I will, I, you know. <laughs> shoot. I'm no, I'll, I'll bring him on. He's gonna, Shooter's got to shoot, you know. Yeah, yeah, look, he's going to be in camp uh, probably in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. And he'll be in Vegas, so he does come down on the weekend. Sometimes he'll come down and... When he comes down, I'll definitely bring him in here. Where does he do. live? We'll, we'll promote that. He's, right. he's in Ohio. He lives in the, the suburbs of Ohio. Look, you know we'll, we'll, we have it on camera. We'll pay for his flight. We'll make sure he comes here, his hotel, taken care of. There it That's is. cool, man. Thank you, guys, man. And I'll, Seriously. I'll bring him in. I'll tell him to bring his world title belt. and like and, uh, and not No him, pressure. He just threw it out. But thank you, seriously, for, yeah. again, making the time thank and bringing this knowledge. And we wish you the best. Thank you. It sounds like you're a very knowledgeable guy. Thank you. Good head on your shoulders. So good luck to you and your fighters, and we look forward to you know seeing you guys seeing these fighters grow as well. You know, and, and of yourselves. course, of course, you're, you're gonna see it. It's gonna be a big year for us. So I'm hoping that you know, God willing, uh, this year Jamel gets a chance to fight for another yeah, world title. Like you and, said uh, one fight away, right? Yeah, and two time two time world champ would sound real nice. Let's get it, man. Heck yeah, yeah. Shout out to him. So Peace first of many, we'll yes. have to have you on again for sure. Guys, thank, thank you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to. Shout like out Mo Boxing too. Shout out Mo Boxing as well. We gotta get some merch from you. For sure, we'll do. Cool. All my boxing fighters, all my boxing fans, Mo Boxing. I, I'm fighting on uh, <laughs> February 20th against Victor. <laughs> 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 no, but for real, man, f follow Mo Boxing for any boxing news. Uh, they're they're always up to date on everything, and 
I was putting up yeah. that that boxing news, guys. Yeah, so. Hey, you can give me a follow online. Um, oh yeah, get, oh, give wait, Jerry a follow. Yeah, Wildcard King, King everywhere. Yeah. as well. And then what's the your company though? It's First, first to Fight Management. First, first to, fight. to Fight Management. So yep. give it. We'll a make shout. Sure, we'll make sure to add that on. Yeah, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Thank oh, you, man. brother. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, yeah. Bryce.